I'm Brian Johnson, a former institutional investment manager and am now a full-time proprietary trader. This is the second in a series of videos that demonstrate several spreadsheet tools that accompany my new book. The title of the new book is Exploiting Earnings Volatility. That book introduces a new analytical approach to evaluating, optimizing, and trading option strategies to profit from earnings announcements. The video series is designed to be viewed in, in order or in sequence to minimize repetitive information. As a result, if you have not viewed the first video in this series, I suggest doing so before viewing this video. However, I will provide a brief overview before moving on to the spreadsheet tools. There are two distinct components of implied volatility. The first is implied earnings volatility, and that is the level of volatility associated with the one-day earnings announcement itself. The other days that occur prior to the expiration of the option constitute normal implied volatility, or essentially non-earnings volatility. The first video used the aggregate implied volatility formula, which is introduced in the book itself, to calculate the implied earnings volatility, or the market's expected level of volatility on the earnings date immediately prior to past earnings events. That's a critical information to help us understand how the market prices or what the market expects with respect to the level of volatility associated with the earnings event for a specific underlying security. But in addition to that, we also need to know what the current level of implied earnings volatility is that are priced into the entire option matrix. This video will use the same aggregate implied volatility formula to solve for the current level of implied volatility that is embedded in option prices and it will forecast how implied volatility will change approaching the earnings announcement itself. It will do so for a range of at the money options with different expiration dates. Once we know how the implied volatilities will change, approaching the earnings date will tell us how option prices will change as well, also approaching earnings, which will allow us to understand the impact on our option earning strategies. Now let's turn to the spreadsheet itself. This is one of the tabs of the basic spreadsheet that accompanies the book Exploiting Earnings Volatility. This tab of the spreadsheet is used to calculate the implied earnings volatility that exists on any date in currently or in the past. To use the spreadsheet, we need to enter information into the cells with the blue background and the white text. At the top left part of the diagram, there are several cells, the first of which we enter in the analysis date or the beginning analysis date, which is also the date of the option prices. That date in this example for UA or Under Armour is 7-14-2014. Immediately below that cell, we enter in the next earnings date, which in this case for Under Armour was 7-23-2014. In addition to the beginning analysis date of 7-14, we also enter in the ending analysis date as of 7-31-2014. Again, what this spreadsheet is attempting to accomplish it's going to use current option prices to calculate the annualized implied earnings volatility as of 7-14-2014, but then it's going to use that information to forecast the implied volatility for all of the all of the at the money options in the matrix between 7-14-2014 and then the ending analysis date of 7-31-2014. And 14. In addition to entering the information for the dates for the spreadsheet, we also have to enter the assumed annualized earnings volatility, and in this case it's just an assumption the spreadsheet is going to calculate this value itself, but we need a starting point for the analysis. So the starting point for the analysis, we're going to enter a value of 100% in the spreadsheet, but the spreadsheet is actually going to go in and solve for the annualized implied earnings volatility as of 7-14-2014.
Once we've entered in that information, we need to enter in a series of option dates. And then for each one of those dates, we need to enter in the implied volatility of the at the money option that corresponds to those dates. So for example, for the option at the money option that expires on 7-26-2014 at the time had an implied volatility of 55.4%. And it had that implied volatility on the initial analysis date of 7-14-2014. We enter in similar values for options that expire on 8-2-2014, 8-9-2014, 8-16-2014 until we've entered in essentially the implied volatility uh, for each at the money option, one for uh, every one of the options uh, across the matrix. Once we have that information, we're ready to proceed and we can actually go ahead and solve for the annualized implied earnings volatility. But before we do that, let me show you or define what a few of the additional columns represent. So the implied earnings volatility that we talked about before, which is our starting point of 100%, is used or assumed to apply to every option in the matrix. Again, it's just one event and it's going to affect all options. It's going to affect every option differently, but that's accounted for in the formula that's in the book. So given that we know what the at the money implied volatility was for each option on 7-14-2014, the aggregate implied volatility formula can use that information to solve for the implied normal at the money implied volatility. And in doing so, we can calculate deviations from the average implied normal uh, or the normal implied volatility. The goal is going to be to minimize the average error, or in this case, the root mean square error, which is found in cell J4. Currently, that level is 4.19%. The 4.91% is based on just an assumed implied earnings volatility of 100% that we started with. But again, that was just an, an, a starting point. It does not represent our best estimate of what the expected implied earnings volatility was on 7-14-2014. To solve for the implied earnings volatility on 7-14-2014 based on the option prices, we're going to use the solver function that's built into Excel. To do that, we're going to go to the Data tab and then click on Solver. I know that's outside of your view currently. And from there, you can see that the objective, the set objective in Solver, is going to attempt to minimize the value of J4. So the value of J4 is the root mean square error, or the 4.19% that we talked about earlier, which is currently rel uh, relatively large. It's going to do that by changing the value of cell C4. And the value of C4 is currently the 100% that we talked about earlier. To use Solver, we just simply click on the Solve button and Solver and click on OK. And Solver has gone in and attempted to minimize the root mean square error which is now 1.13%, and it has solved for the optimal value of the implied earnings volatility of 137.4%. So as of 7-14-2014, based on the option prices that we've entered, the solver has gone in and calculated the implied earnings volatility that existed on that date, and then we can now use that information to forecast for each one of the options in the matrix, the implied volatility approaching and then passing the earnings date between 7-14-2014 and then 7-31-2014. To see those values, we can see them for each date by just clicking the down arrow, and for each of the items in the matrix, each one of the options in the matrix that we've entered earlier, for example, the option with the expiration date of 7 26 2014 
the aggregate implied volatility formula has gone in and calculated the implied volatility for that option as it approaches the earnings date itself. So for example, on 7-14-2014 was our initial analysis date, but then it also does the calcula calculation on 7-15-2014 and so on and so forth until it actually reaches the earnings date itself. The day before earnings, which is 7-23-2014, it forecasts that the implied volatility will increase all the way up to 99.9%. After the earnings date, it forecasts that the implied volatility will drop all the way down to 33.1%. It does the same calculation for each one of the options in the matrix that we've talked about earlier. And you can look at each one of those forecasts numerically by looking at the bottom of the sheet. In addition, if we also want to look at the information graphically, we can click back up on the up arrow and then we can go over and we can look at the graph for each one of the options in the matrix again. In this case, the first option in the matrix, the first at the money option in the matrix, the one that expired on 7-26-2014, began with an implied volatility of approximately 55%. And as I mentioned earlier, as it approaches earnings, the implied volatility climbed all the way up to approximately 100%. After the earnings date itself, the implied volatility for all of the options drops back down to the essentially the normal implied volatility. So that's an example of how we can use this tab of the spreadsheet to solve for the implied earnings volatility that exists on any date. We can once we've solved for the implied earnings volatility in this case 137.4 percent, we can use that information to forecast the implied earnings volatility for every option, every at the money option in the matrix as it approaches earnings and then as it bypasses or passes earnings as well. So the first video in this series allowed us to calculate the implied earnings volatility that existed that was priced into the options prior to a past earnings date. Now we have the ability to calculate the implied earnings volatility on any date, and by comparing those two terms, we can construct a strategy that exploits implied earnings volatility anomalies. In other words, in this particular case, the implied earnings volatility that existed on 7-14-2014 was 137.4%. What if, hypothetically, in the past, the market had priced and implied earnings volatility prior to past earnings events of only 50%. That would imply that the 137.4% that we're seeing today is grossly overestimating the expected level of volatility associated with the earnings event. In that case, we would want to construct a strategy that sells uh, implied earnings volatility. Conversely, in the past, what if the market had priced in an implied earnings volatility of, say, closer to 200%. In that case, the 137.4% would look relatively cheap. In other words, options would be underpriced today because the market is undervaluing uh, the implied earnings volatility associated with the upcoming earnings events. As a result, by comparing the current level of implied earnings volatility to past levels of implied earnings volatility, we can construct strategies that have a high probability of success and a relatively low level of risk. That brings us to the end of the second video in this series. Under Resources and Links, you can also visit www.traderedge.net to access a series of blog posts on a wide range of investment and trading topics. You'll also find book links there to my new book, Exploiting Earnings Volatility, and my first book on options as well. You'll find a link to a strategy. And finally, you'll also find links to 15% discount offers from Trader Edge affiliates. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and thank you very much.